glare off the river glass, drifting, drifting away. River sand pebbles clear, what a blue sky. Can't tell if I'm dreaming or just losing my mind. I found a place to run I found a place where I could live With only the essentials Shelter and the sea Atkinson. If you could imagine your perfect day sport fishing, what would it look like? Well for me, it would start right here at dawn on a north coast river that's the home of that great Aussie sport fish, the Australian bass, and it would involve a canoe, a good mate, and a whole day at our disposal to explore all the great fishing options that are on offer. Throughout the day we're going to vary our tackle and techniques to suit the ever-changing light and river conditions. In the low light early we'll use surface lures like this one and then as the sun rises higher in the sky we'll fish deeper into the water columns using soft plastic and some hard body presentations. And then as the light starts to drop again we'll move back to surface lures in the afternoon and we'll get you out there on the water and do some night fishing. Anyhow last night we had a big thunderstorm, it's freshened up the river so let's get out there and see what's biting. The north coast of New South Wales is a narrow coastal strip between the rugged valleys and cliffs of the Great Dividing Range in the west and the warm waters and golden sands of the Pacific Ocean in the east. The area is punctuated by rivers both big and small that begin their life in steep gullies before flowing through rainforest, farmland and townships on their journey to the sea. This beautiful subtropical region is recognised as the heartland of wild bass fishing. It's where I'm lucky enough to live and where I do nearly all my fishing. The Aussie bass is a powerfully built predator that in the wild grows to about 60 centimetres in length and 3 kilos in weight. It's an aggressive lure taker, especially on the surface. A tenacious fighter and a handsome fish to photograph, admire and release. That's why it is so highly prized and the target species for my perfect day sport fishing. The life cycle of the bass reflects the life of the river only in reverse, with the bass spawning during winter down in the salt before heading back upstream in the warmer months to spend much of their time feeding near the surface on all the obvious candidates such as grasshoppers, dragonflies, moths, frogs and especially cicadas. It is in this upstream canoe only environment that we like to target bass and there's no better way to do that than throwing a surface lure around the snags just after sunup. Oh yes! 
nice bass. <laughs> There's a couple of kingfishers over on the log and I, they caught my attention and I just cast my lure near them. Oh, damn. <laughs> he got away. <laughs> Let's see if we can get another one. If you had asked me four or five years ago why I use surface lures so much, I probably would have told you that I enjoy watching surface strikes and bass fishing is not about numbers of fish but how and where I catch them. I'm now happy to say that I use surface lures so frequently because they've proven themselves to be so incredibly effective. To get the most out of this sort of fishing, it pays to have all your senses working and while the river environment at times bombards you with a variety of sights and sounds, to a fisherman the sound of a bass feeding is unmistakable. that I've just hooked boiled on the surface or hit an insect and I just cast within about a metre of where I saw the disturbance and bam, you just hit it. The surface lure, I'm using a jitterbug. It's not a bad fish. <laughs> nice north coast bass on a surface lure. Here he comes. And uh, yeah, he's a nice fish. <laughs> Look at that. Nice solid north coast bass. But um, yeah, it's exciting fishing when you can actually um, actually see the fish feeding and then cast in the general vicinity. Uh, it's interesting that when they are feeding, you don't have to cast exactly at the spot that you last saw them, um, usually within a few metres, and they'll find it because they think it's an insect that's dropped out of the tree. Anyway, let's have a look at this guy and see how big he is. Oh, he's a nice fish. There we go. <laughs> Slow down. Nice North Coast bass. Taking on a jitterbug there. And uh, he smashed it and he was on. And that's the way we like them. <laughs> bass fishing is all about their hit. They're not the greatest fighters. They're not going to sizzle line off your reel and sustained runs. But gee, they hit a little hard. And uh, in the stillness of, a, of an early North Coast morning or a late evening, that actual hit the smash, the bang, that's what it's all about. That's the addictive part about bass fishing, especially surface luring, because you can see it all happening before your eyes. Hello, mate. Nice one. Okay, let's get the hooks out, and let's get him back. I'm using barbless hooks, so they're coming out relatively easy. <laughs> Catch and release bass fishing, that's where it's at. What you can see in the water here is exactly what we're trying to imitate with our lures. You've got a cicada that's fallen out of the sky, maybe a bird's hit it, injured it, and it's ended up in the river. And uh, you can see, even though it's not moving greatly at the moment, it is still sending out little rings of rings of water, disturbance along, along the surface of the water. And these surface lures, like this one here, this is a, is a, uh, a fizzer, they're actually meant to imitate insects that have fallen into the water that are uh, floating around on the surface trying to take off again and uh, that's what the bass and the brim and all the fish that live on the north coast that feed on the surface they're looking for insects like that cicada that have fallen into the river so we're using smaller lures like this one which has got a little uh, propeller blade on it and uh, you may have seen me land a, a nice 40 centimeter bass earlier on a lure like this one now this is a bit bigger but uh, the biggest cicadas that hit the river, that's what that's imitating. And um, bass just love them. And the brim will have a go at them too, but they, uh, they aren't very successful in hooking up. There we go. Now you can see those rings. But that is exactly what we're trying to imitate. Let's go fishing enough looking at insects. Fish straight on the hook. Actually, I didn't even have a chance to set the hook. The lure landed, and I was hooked up the very moment the lure landed. Oh, 
here we go. I've changed over to a small, uh, small fizzer. And uh, this is probably the first decent cast I've done with it since I changed over. And I put the cast right on the bank. And uh, this fish just went, bloop, ate the lure, no fuss, and he's on. And he's not a bad fish. Nice bass. I'm a North Coast bass. Uh, the quality of the fishing is just sensational. Let's see if we can get this guy in. Only lightly hooked. Nice solid fish. Yeah. Look at that. Nice North Coast bass. Taken on a little surface fizzer. Cast to this fairly uh, Fairly boring bank, deep but boring, and this guy was sitting right under the overhang. And the moment that lure landed, it just touched down, and he just went bloop and ate it. I, I didn't even actually know I had him on because he went straight to the bottom of the lure, didn't pull any drag, and it wasn't until I lifted my rod that I realised I had the fish on. As you can see, he was only lightly hooked. What a nice fish! Hello, right mate. Let's get you back and we'll see if we can get your, uh, your big brother. <laughs> Top fishes. Our plan for the morning is to push upstream against the current into the more inaccessible parts of the river while the light is still low. Although this can be hard work, the results are usually worth the effort, allowing us not only to fish the best pools early in the day, but to also control the speed at which we fish by working into the gentler current of the deeper water. Up here, from four to five months of the year, you can't hear yourself think as the air and bankside surrounds are absolutely buzzing with small creatures that fly, jump, crawl and hop. In an area with as much overhanging remnant rainforest as the north coast, there's no better way of matching the hatch than with something that fizzes, chugs, crawls, or bloops across the top of the water. Today, the cicadas are really on the job early, and when they're making this much noise, you know bass action is never too far away. A little fish out. Slightly bigger fish. Yeah, and I've got him. Not very big at all, but he came back for a second hit. They're keen though, like this, this guy hit the lure twice and eventually got what he was after. But uh, it's certainly not the size we're chasing. Yeah. not to be trigger happy when they're on these short, only a short cast, not much line belly and twice now I've basically pulled the lure out of the fish's mouth. On the longer cast, the line belly, the fish tends to hook up on the belly before you can stuff it up, so I did then twice. Follow it. Uh. That's not the same fish. <laughs> the first one was big. I'm not so sure about that one. Okay, we'll cast back in there again, I think.
think the fish might have uh, wised up as to what's going on. Well, it wasn't that good. <laughs> they, uh, they throw a lot of water around. Um, sometimes they'll suck the lure off the surface and you'll hook up without much commotion. Other times they'll throw water all over the lure. It's almost as though they're trying to drown the whatever's on the surface, the cicada in the case of this lure, trying to drown it and get it to go below before they eat it. moment it landed. taken on a uh, fizzer. The cicadas are going flat out above us and uh, I guess they're waiting for a cicada to land in the water and um, that little fizzer there, the moment it landed, this little bass was straight onto it. This fish hit me. I was just having a warm up cast out to the middle of the, uh, the river here just to get a few backlashes out of the reel. Mike was mucking around with the camera, and you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> a nice bass hit my, hit my fizzer. Here he comes, he's a good fish. a north coast bass. He's at least 40, 48, 49 centimetres and uh, he absolutely slammed this fizzer right out in the middle of the river. Nowhere near a snag. You can hear the cicadas in the background and uh, they're going ballistic. And I, as, as I made the cast, I, I only made it to clear loops on the reel, but the thought did go through my mind. I mean, cicadas are falling into the river all over the place. Why would fish only hit a surface lure near the snag? If these guys are hungry, they'll feed anywhere. And uh, there's a great example. Ooh, beautiful. Got a nice bronze colouring. And uh, there's the lure that did the trick. Black surface fizzer. There's the reason they're hitting lures on the surface and um, for my money, North Coast bass fishing is all about surface luring. It's my favourite way of doing it. Um, yes, we've caught fish on all sorts of things over the years, but uh, surface lures are certainly the way to go if you want these big trophy fish. Anyway, we'll get this guy back into the water and let him go and I might even see if this cicada can fly. I don't think he had, he's got wet wings. Well, right, mate, we'll get you back. It's the 50. Too much better than that, but we'll keep trying. <laughs> the only problem you've got after landing a really big fish like that one is that the green monster soon rears its ugly head, and your seat in the front of the canoe will only be yours for as long as it takes to paddle to the bank and swap places. Keen to trade the video camera for a fishing rod, Mike had us to the bank in five seconds flat and was quickly back mid-river casting at likely looking spots. Whether you admit to it or not, there's always an underlying element of competition when you're fishing with your mates. The next cast could be the fish of the day.
There you go, boys. Phil caught a 50. Might get to 50 millimeter. Rivers and pebbles clear. What a blue sky. Can't tell if I'm dreaming or just losing my mind. Yes, I found a place to run. I found a place where I could live. With only the essentials, shelter and the sea. Sometimes it really pays to take a little sidetrack and explore it. That narrow, shallow, overgrown little trickle we just pushed through looked for all the world like a dead end. But have a look at this little gem we've discovered up ahead. This is a totally different environment up here to what you find in the main river. It's really skinny water. And we're going to be fishing little pools up here no bigger than your lounge room and casting to some that are only as big as your bathroom. It's a great opportunity to get out of the canoe and do some bank fishing as well. I can tell you, the pulse is starting to race, so let's get up there. Okay, you just slurped that straight off the surface. It didn't make a lot of noise or a lot of fuss. Not a bad little fish. Okay, Phil will need to go forward a little bit. He's just got me under a lot of fish. He's actually not a bad fish at all. Okay. Oh. How deceptive. Damn it. Oh, that was a bit frustrating, but he was actually quite a good fish and uh, that was really deceptive. He made no splash or noise over there at all. He slurped that lure off the surface and he came in quite easily and then when he got near that log just here, he went right underneath it and uh, I think that's how he did me in the end. But, pretty good fishing. Let's go and see if we can get some more. Uh, I might just go left here. Yeah, we'll just stay here. Yeah, just go left here right now, okay. great location. Almost like a, a natural cathedral up there. It's just solid canopy. You can fish this with surface lures all day. There's that much shade up here. Scenarios all over the place that I can see that I want to cast to. Let's see what's up there. Yep. Great hit. Classic bass hit. A lot of suction in it. And he's not a bad fish too. I've got him on a, on a short leash here. A short range hit. Yeah, nice looking fish. Okay.
there you go. A great bass. And as you can see, he's really inhaled that little cicada pattern down there. He's got it right down his throat. Beautiful little fish. They're so aggressive. I think that's what we uh, prize about them so much. All right, let's get that lure out. Well, that's the value of barbless hooks. So he had that right down his throat, and you could see it wasn't too hard to get it out. No damage to the fish at all. He's ready and raring to go. River sand pebbles clear, water blue sky. Can't tell if I'm dreaming or just losing my mind. Yes, I found a place to run, I found a place where I could live. Shelter in the sea I need good reason to stay And good reason to leave Yet everything is meaningless To stop chasing Oh yeah. Yeah, he wanted that. He hit that really solidly. Yeah, it's not a bad size, this fish. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's putting up a good account for himself. Nice sized fish for such uh, narrow water. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's got a lot of fight in him. Just switch tactic then and I tried a, uh, a smaller, lighter surface lure and uh, seemed to do the trick on this fella. Yeah, he's a nice fish. There you go. I never get sick of this. That's a great little bass. And in really skinny water, that's the, uh, that's the real prize about this, is uh, catching this bass in such, such a great spot. Also shows the value of uh, changing your approach if things are slowing down a little bit. It's getting on into the uh, later morning now, so we decided to, uh, to change that little green locust pattern to something a little bit lighter and a different color and uh, first cast it worked. I twitched it under those trees over there and on about the fifth twitch, that's when he decided he wanted it. He hit it really hard. Put up a great account for himself. And uh, as I said, you just never get tired of this sort of bass action. All right, let's get him back in. Bass fishing to us is all about where we fish and how we fish. Our canoe takes us silently into a world we would have no other way of visiting. Our adventure into the skinny water had produced some exciting fishing, but with the river getting narrower and the going getting tougher, it was now time to head back down into the main river 
and continue our journey upstream. Every part of the river presents new possibilities and today we were keen to cram in as much as we could. not just about catching fish, it's about the great places that you get to visit and this is one of the best. Having a break allows us to talk a little bit about the gear that we've been using. It's been a really changeable day today weather-wise. We had that big thunderstorm last night. We've had a bit of sunshine this morning, but now it's clouding back over and I wouldn't be surprised if we get a little bit more rain this afternoon. So we've got to be able to uh, adapt to those changing river conditions really quickly and fish the right tackle and the right techniques to suit the conditions. I like to use this little bait cast outfit. It's a 1.8 metre rod a nice light bait caster. I'm running 10 pound braid as the main line and I usually run 10 pound leader as well. If the territory gets a little rough, I might go to 12 pound or 15 pound. But on this one, I like to fish it with a surface lure or with a diving lure. The other outfit that uh, I like to use is this spin outfit. It's a two meter rod, nice light spin reel. But on this one, I'm running four pound main line. I like to fish this rod with soft plastics and the four pound main line allows me to get that soft plastic nice and deep. I usually run eight pound litre on this one, but if the uh, water's really clear and the sun's really shining, I'll go lighter than that, maybe down to six pound. How about you, Phil? Well, uh, my approach is uh, much less subtle. Um, I've been lucky enough to fish the low light conditions this morning and uh, because of that, I've been able to fish a little bit heavier. I'm using two bait casters. Uh, this one's 1.8 metres, this one's 2 metres in length. Um, two nice bait cast reels, of course. On these reels, I've got 15 pound braid and 20 pound braid. And the leaders I'm using are 15 pound um, fluorocarbon and also 20 pound fluorocarbon. So I'm, I can fish heavier because the light's a lot lower, the fish are less inhibited. 
and I'm fishing these surface floors. Now you saw this that really turn on a 50 centimetre bass yeah. just before. Um, they just smack them. They don't hang around looking at your leader. You know, when they're really firing, you could cast on a rope and they'd probably hit the lure. And I'm sure back in the, the good old days, they probably did. So subtlety is not such a big deal for me. Okay. We've pushed upstream as far as we're going to go today. So from now on, it's downstream. And we're actually going to push on well past where we've got the, got the car parked. So we'll have to get a lift back up to get the car. So we've got a lot of river to go. A lot of changing river conditions. Um, we're going to keep our eyes and our ears open. Um, if you've got Polaroid glasses on, that's good too. Um, with the sun high, you'll be able to see a fair way into the water and you need to t target the pockets of water, the deeper water where the bass are. And listen for those cicadas because as you hear some trees where they're buzzing, get the surface lures back out. Yep. Anyhow, what do you reckon? Yep. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, we reckon, this, this player reckons he knows a bit about, he's a local. He knows a fair amount about the bass. They give him a hard time at night when he's having a swim, nibbling on his feet. This is where we get all our inside information. You've got to know the locals if you want to catch bass. It's not what you know to you know. Taking the stream less paddled is the soul of canoe bass fishing. And as we moved downstream, we were presented with a number of forks in the river. Each one posed a question that sometimes even a map couldn't answer for us. We made many decisions based on our gut feelings about where the better fishing might lie. Sometimes we got it right, sometimes we got it wrong. But in the end, in an environment as beautiful as this, it didn't really matter. Dead end. This is what happens after a major flood. Got a really thick log jam here. This uh, this wasn't here before last time we came down. It was a clear flow through here, nice ponds. We were fishing all the way through, but not today. We're going to have to negotiate a little bit of a, an obstacle here. I think there's nothing else for it but to get out, see if we can find our way through. Hopefully it's not too big. All right, let's have a look. Portages are a necessary evil when canoe-based bass fishing. When you're forced to carry the canoe through a steep section of bush, all those items like an electric motor and a battery that usually make life in the canoe comfortable become a burden that you have to pay for in sweat, scratches and sore muscles. Bass fishing is all about anticipation. The anticipation of the next pool, the next hit, the next big fish. In the hard times like this, it's this anticipation that keeps you going. Fishermen talk a lot about the merits of various lures, but when it comes down to it, successful fishing is a lot about confidence and how well you use the lure you have selected. Just like a coach never likes to change a winning team, it's the lure that a fisherman has had the most success with in the past that usually gets the nod. The way the little gold fizzer, we'd affectionately named Goldie, had performed earlier in the morning, how could I not give it a run once again? As much as we enjoy canoe fishing, it's always good to get out, feel the cool water around your legs and the river pebbles under your feet and try some bank fishing. It had been refreshing to stretch our legs, but with the river deepening and the canopy enclosing, 
it was time to get back in and go with the downstream flow. As we glided towards some deep tree-lined banks, it didn't take long for Goldie to produce the goods again. He just slurped that down. Here's a good fish. And I cast out the little uh, cicada imitation and this guy just came up and slurped it. Didn't smash it, just went slurp. Hardly any surface uh, disturbance. He's a solid little fish. Here we go. Not a bad bass. Since that exciting surface action of this morning, things have quietened down a little. But I'm not surprised because the sun's high in the sky now, the water's really clear, so we've decided we're going to go to plastics. I've rigged up two plastics rods here. This one with a 1 16th jig head and a 3 inch watermelon coloured plastic. And this one with a 1 24th jig head and a little bloodworm coloured uh, plastic. Now the reason I've done that is that I want to present the most natural lure that I can to the fish and I always feel that the best one is the lightest one. This rig with the 1 16th jig head is for those deeper snags but this one is for the snags that are in shallower water. So I'm going to alternate between these two depending on the conditions that come up. The term dominant snag is something we use fairly loosely, but given time on the water, you'll soon begin to pick out the grottos that consistently produce the most fish. You'll see certain similarities in their features. At this time of the day, we weren't going to waste time casting into shallow water without feature or shade. Instead, we kept searching for the deepest water and the best looking snags. Using a combination of light leader and patient retrieve, it didn't take Mike too long to find some fish. Yep. Okay, so hard. Bass just love to um, sit under this weed, particularly at night time, they, um, they'll come up and hit your surface lures through it. Um, there probably are bass under the weed right now, but um, just, they won't come up and strike in the, in the bright sunlight. But there's a lot of uh, fish holding cover there. As much as I would have to force myself to put my surface gear away, I realised that the midday conditions and clear water made fishing soft plastics the sensible choice, as Mike had just proved. Moving back into the front of the canoe, I was actually looking forward to the new challenge of fishing plastics deep and slowly. While the strikes lack the noise and commotion of a surface hit, there's a great satisfaction that comes with fooling a fish when you finesse a piece of soft plastic to life. Every pool on a river has its own persona and presents a variety of luring options for the angler who can read it well. The pool we had just entered offered a mixture of water depths from 4 metres on the steep left hand bank to half a metre on the mud and weed fringe bank to our right and towards the end of the pool. Spread across these depths are a mix of snags, boulders and weed beds, all capable of holding solid bass, with hidey holes reachable with long Ooh. and accurate casts. In the shallows. <laughs> Come on. He's a good fish. Picked it up. 
in probably two feet of water there in the shallows. He's not huge, but he's a nice fish. Come on. Just uh, heading to the end of the pool here and I thought I'll have one more cast before we get ourselves ready to go down the next rapid run. The water's been fairly deep and um, just here it's gotten gravelly and, and coming up out of the depths into the shallows before the run and I just made the cast into about a foot of water probably and brought it back across the, the gravel and this guy just picked it up off the bottom. I'm not sure whether he shot up out of the deep a bit to get it or whether he was up there feeding but um, he's a nice fish on a uh, 1 16th jig head, uh, beautiful freshwater fish, eh? bass, Australian bass, you've got to love them. I'll get you one hook, there you go. <laughs> All right, you've got to like that. These fluorocarbon leaders, worth every cent. Come out of there. Oh, bad fish. He's trying his hardest to get back under that log. Look at that. That's four kilo um, fluorocarbon leader that I'm using. And um, this fish, it's not a small fish, it's not a huge fish, but he, um, he hit me over that log and my leader was just rubbing on the log virtually the whole, the whole of the fight. You can see in there, he wants to get into that root ball. Um, that's where the fish tend to, to hold up where the biggest aggregation of roots or flood debris is. But this is looking really nice, this spot. And uh, it's a nice little fish. As is often the case, the, um, the initial bite sort of uh, didn't give an indication of the quality of the fish. He's not a long fish, but he's certainly a nice, uh, nice fat specimen. Nice little Aussie bass. Beautiful. <laughs> uh. Anyway, we'll let him go and uh, he can uh, hopefully uh, give someone else as much enjoyment as he just gave me another day when he's a bit bigger. Beautiful. <laughs> there you go, mate. I know where you're going. Right back on that snag. There's 
are trembling in the atmosphere. Pride still rise. What fishing deep plastics may lack in surface visuals, it certainly makes up for an overall fight. A fish hook deep in the water requires a lot more rod work in order to extract it from cover that's often less than a bent rod tip away. Absolutely smashed it, and he was on. And uh, this is a nice bass. I put the lure pretty much within a foot of uh, the log over there, gave it a bit of a twitch, and this big fella here just absolutely uh, inhaled it. So here we go, it's a nice fish. Let's see if we can get him in to show you. There's one fish in the fresh water that loves to eat a lure. It's a bass. Let's have a look at him. Beautiful Australian bass. If you are handling a bass, you've got to be very careful. If you have a look on the end of the, uh, the gill plates, there's a very sharp spike right there and uh, can inflict a very painful wound. Um, particularly in the smaller bass, they tend to uh, always find you, but big fish like this usually are pretty well behaved. That's a beautiful example of a North Coast bass. Uh, he's 40, 43, 44 centimetres. Not a huge fish, but still a nice fish and um, in great condition and look at that olive bronze colouring on the top fish. afternoon period, Mike spots a prominent log laying in deep water and decides to introduce a bigger and flashier sinking lure. His choice, a gold rattler, was a good one. Yeah, good right beside that log there, it's just the, uh, the little rattling spot dropped beside the, uh, the log. Putting up a good account for himself. Yeah, nice fish. It's been a bit quiet, but he certainly slammed this lure. Okay, let's have a look at him. Yeah, nice fish. Yeah, he's a nice fish. He's probably be about 40 centimetres long. Uh, we'd been uh, fishing with plastics for a little while, but uh, we decided that uh, the fish might need waking up a little bit. So we tried one of these little uh, rattling varieties. And sure enough, I dropped it right beside a log over there and he slammed it. Um, sometimes the fish, when it, it is a little quieter, they need uh, a lure that has a, more of a presence, more vibration and more flash. It certainly worked on this occasion. One of our pet hates is travelling during prime fishing time. With the late afternoon and night sessions approaching, we decided to make the most of the slow fishing conditions by getting ourselves into the stretch of river that we really wanted to fish. One of the last things we wanted to do was to fish a treacherous section of river in the dark. The pools we had in mind for night fishing were quite familiar to us and we knew that the rapid runs were manageable. Getting wet's half the fun. Don't want to get too wet though. Especially when you're uh, about to go night fishing. It gets pretty cold, even in summer. Let's 
kitty. He shouldn't be had. Get one on the bank. Oh yeah. It's got me on the snag as well. Here comes the cavalry. Still connected? I don't know. It'd right, be right over the top of the snag here. I can see the lure. <laughs> Wasn't that a good hit? Bit of excitement. That's what happens when you get hit right over the top of a snag. No margin for error there, he just took me straight down. I think he was a pretty good fish. Probably lucky to get the lure back. The one that got away, eh? Don't move on your left, there's a platypus, right, don't move it a, minute, a second. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that was a bit of wood. <laughs> Did you taste something? How good was that? Platypus, <laughs> two metres off the uh, bow of the canoe. Ain't bad. Take. Yeah, I heard the take, I just heard the bloop. This goes to show you it pays to leave the lure on the water for a little while. about the spray. I'm upset. <laughs> nice fat little bass. There you go. That lure just sat on the water for uh, Oh, probably 15 or 20 seconds or more. I was busy fiddling with the line, just undoing a little tangle, and he just slurped it straight off the surface. Okay. See you later, mate. It's funny how different rivers have a different standard of length for what rates as a good fish. Today, Anything over 40 centimetres is a decent fish. But when you're fishing this neck of the woods with your mates, 45 centimetres is where bragging rights begin. After a day of casting, Mike was still to get the fish he was looking for. And when that big fish is eluding you, the only option you have is to keep casting accurately into the strike zone. This is the area within centimetres of snags, overhanging banks and trees, where even the most shut down fish can't resist pouncing on your offering. Yep. 
Oh yeah. So it's got a bit of toe in him. Toe in the canoe, he must have some toe in <laughs> Didn't seem that big when he first took it. But uh, he's just coming in quietly now. I think he's going to explode in a minute. He's not a bad fish. He's hung up on the surface and he's come in quietly. And he's, uh, he's still pretty green. He's got uh, some energy left. I think we need to uh, just let him run it out a little bit before we bring him in. <coughs> yeah, nice looking fish. Hear the cicadas in the background, and that's what we got him on—a cicada imitation. That is a nice bass. Taken on a little uh, gold cicada fizzer that you saw early in the day that worked really well in the morning low light hours. And it's done the business again here in the afternoon. And uh, as I said, he, he just uh, took it pretty quietly. He hung on the surface, but he was actually uh, a much better fish than, uh, than I thought he was to start with. I think he's probably be about a 45 centimetre bass. He's a really nice fish, nice solid wild river bass. Okay, I'll just get the uh, hooks out. Bit of a delicate operation here because uh, he's actually got one of these hooks pretty close to his eye and I don't want to damage him. Okay, Bill, I think we're going to have to get the pliers on this one, mate. Hold him up for a photo. <laughs> okay, we've just taken a few still shots because he's, uh, he's really worth a photo, this fella. He's, uh, he's easily 45 centimetres and he's got that feel of a big bass. You, you know when you've got a big one, just the look of them, the size of the scale pattern is, uh, is a beautiful fish and this is what we've come for. And uh, the light is getting lower now and we're hoping that uh, it's going to bring on even more big ones like this and hopefully even bigger as the night comes on. Let's get him back in the water. I'll just swim him a little bit because we've had him up for a few photos. There he goes. Okay, now I'm fired up for some more. Let's go get him. There's something magic about dusk on the river. Between the din of cicadas and the night symphony of frogs and crickets, there's a small window of stillness when the river is somehow at peace with itself. That is, of course, until the bats arrive. They start as a trickle across the sunset and it's not long until the sky is black with flapping wings and shrill cries. There's nothing like the North Coast. We've had a great afternoon fishing and Mike caught some really nice bass on smaller surface lures in the low light. 
but now the sun has set and uh, the frogs and the crickets are starting to take over from the cicadas. Now's the time of night when the bass tend to lose their inhibitions. They come out from the snags to feed. Um, and what we're going to start throwing in the darkness are these bigger, noisier surface lures. I'm still using a fizzer here and uh, I'm still using a chugger. And we use fizzers and smaller chuggers during the day. But once it's dark, noisier the better. And uh, my casting, well, I'm never quite sure where it's going to land. I've got a bit of a feel for the river. We've been fishing all day. so. I sort of know the way the trees are and the way the lay of the land is. So I'm going to make long casts pretty parallel to the bank. I'm going to get as close as I feel comfortable to and uh, I'm going to listen to the noise my lure makes and that's going to tell me where it is, whether it's got weed on it and uh, when a bass hits, whammo, um, it'll be noisy. Um, we'll throw the lights on when we get a hook up but unfortunately we can't illuminate the whole river and show you the hits because it really does spook the bass. So. Let's give it a go. One of the dangers of surface luring at night, apart from the fact you don't really know where you're casting, is that when you're on a river that's got little rapid runs, you've got to keep your ears uh, wide open because you uh, don't want to be going down a rapid in the dark, um, especially when you have a video camera out and all the gear all over the place. So we'll have to batten down the hatches in a moment. Okay, rapid dead ahead. Time to get out. Yeah. Hold it there, Phil. This is the tail rope untangled. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Just let me get across here to the left. We've just made it through a, um, a rapid run. I managed to fall in, but we're in another pool now, so we're working our way downstream and uh, change back to a fizzer and uh, we'll see how we go. Oh yes. Not sure he's the biggest fish in the world. <laughs> that surface is pretty hard. Not a bad fish on a surface fizzer. <laughs> oh, they hit hard at night, that's the beauty of it. Just the, the sheer excitement factor. See you later, mate. <laughs> I think it's time for a lure change, mate. Okay. I've had great success uh, fishing this fizzer during the low light periods during the day, but now that it's late at night and we're trying to really uh, interest some big fish, I feel a little bit more confident uh, in using a, a surface chugger like this. Uh, possibly doesn't move through the water as quick, but it gives a much lower frequency noise and uh, it can excite the big fish, so I'll get it on. In the shallows, this fellow. Can you laugh? Slammed me. Get the light off. Oh, yeah. 
Jeez, they hit a little. Yeah, that is a nice fish. Not huge, but uh, look at him in the water there. <laughs> oh, what's the time? Let's have a look. It's uh, quarter to eleven at night, and uh, the bass are still biting. Let's go, buddy. Solid little bass, <laughs> taken uh, well after dark on a surface chugger. Alright mate, we'll get you back because I've got a suspicion that you've got a bigger brother or sister. When you are using surface lures it pays to work the lure slowly and patiently. Um, this guy was taken on a fairly long cast over water that was, was probably only two or three feet deep at most, over rocks, and uh, worked a little very slowly, and bang, he hit it. Anyway, we'll get him back. You'll see the bottom down there, we're only in a few feet of water. See you later, mate. Are you want to turn around or what? Yeah, I'll just put a couple up here. Yes. Uh, he hit me next to a rock. I can see a boulder in the middle of the, of the river. And I just cast this big chugger right next to it and bam! A bad fish. Yeah, he's, he's a nice fish. That's the thing about uh, surface luring at night. It's all, all done by sound. <laughs> uh, he's, a, he's a very good fish. I don't know how big he is, but he's up around 50. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Let's see if I can get him up. Look at him. Uh, this is the thing about night fishing for bass, it's, uh, it's all noise, it scared the daylights out of me when it hit the lure. It's, uh, it's just cast out into the darkness and, uh, and hope. Alright, let's get him up for a look Mike. Just keep rolling, see if I can get a comfort lift on him. He's well hooked. Look at that. <laughs> I'd say he's pretty close to 50. Taking on a uh, nice little chugger. <laughs> Look at that. Hey, that's what uh, bass fishing is all about. Surface luring and uh, after dark, all the more exciting I say. You mightn't be able to see your cast, but I can assure you, you can uh, see the hit and you can feel uh, the way of the fish through the rod. So. What a beautiful fish. <laughs> Way to go. Uh, they love insects, whether it's night or day. Um, they're always looking up for a feed and uh, this guy certainly did not miss. <laughs> All right, might get a measure on him. I'd say he's pretty close to the magic figure. There we go. Come on, mate. Come on, no cheating there. No. Depends which way he's, I'm not cheating, he's 500 to the, from the fork of the tail, 500. So he's a, a very good fish by, uh, by anyone's standards. All right, we'll get him back in the water. Well, I don't think we're gonna uh, top this fellow. This is a fantastic end to uh, my perfect day's bass fishing and there's only one more thing to do and that's let this uh, magnificent fish go. See you later mate.
this guy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the end of my perfect day. We covered a lot of river, caught a lot of great fish and used a wide variety of lures. What a fantastic way to spend the day sport fishing. If only the perfect day really did exist. Well, I reckon that's a wrap. Sounds good to me. My butt cheeks are moulded into that canoe seat. I feel like I've uh, been in it for about a week. Yeah, that's for sure. I'll make it a month. Think I'll yeah, anyhow, when's your mate picking us up? My mate? World you said you were going to organise the picking. Underneath. No, no, you told me that you'd organise the picking. You were dreaming. In the corner of my room. Space to breathe and time to sleep. Time to sleep yeah, yeah. And it's as if You were here with me Laughing at the reality There's always some space to breathe Time to sleep Never had a mobile. Well, mate, you're lucky I got mine with me. I'll give Dale a ring and see if he'll come and pick us up. Okay. G'day, Dale. How you going, mate? It's Phil. Sorry for ringing so late. Yeah, yeah, we, we just got off the river. No, no, we had a, a really good day. We got some very nice fish. Yeah, we, we were wondering if you could come and pick us up. Where are we? Mike, where are we? I wouldn't have a clue where we are. Don't you know where we are? We don't know where we are. Dale, we don't know where we are. Mate, so much for the perfect day. Now I wish I could take you by the hand. Now I wish I could lead you to the promised land. I will always give you space. Mike, just quickly tell us what the problem is. Show us the other rod. <laughs> Mike successfully managed to snag two rods up in consecutive casts on the best looking snag in the river. I've not this year. <laughs> Hi. Now I've got to stop then. So stop first, yeah. Hi, I'm Phil Atkinson. If you could imagine a group... Let's just, let me just do it again. Just take your time. Don't rush it. Oh. I'll start again. <laughs> I know what I haven't had is a coffee. That's what it is. I haven't had a coffee today. Yeah. Been up since 4.30, mate.